Good morning, Tampa Bay. I have been tracking Hurricane Idalia, and in this time, we do see the system is now pushing closer and farther into the Gulf. Now, I'm anticipating this system is going to rapidly intensify and strengthen into a Category 2 as soon as our next update, if not by later on this afternoon. And that's because of the warm temperatures the Gulf is receiving right now. So we see very warm water that this system is going to interact with. It's going to tap into that warm water, use it as an energy source to get its act together and then we will see this rapidly intensify into a major hurricane a category three potentially and then after that we continue to see this taking that track more northeastward and still the cone showing us it's likely we have a landfall heading into early wednesday morning right along the big bend area I know Tampa Bay is not in the cone. However, we need to take this seriously, get those necessary things going in terms of preparation, supplies for your kit, because these impacts, such as storm surge, the most deadly, and also gusty bands of rain and wind, are still going to be impacting us far outside of the cone, and especially here in the Tampa Bay area. In terms of timing, that's going to be later tonight into tomorrow as well. So keep that in mind. The cone, not really that much of a big deal right there. It's just showing us that direct general motion and movement. However, what we want to see is this system essentially tries to behave itself with some of these bands. Here's what I'm thinking about over the next couple of hours. Here's what we got to watch for. Tornado watch could come into effect as we could see some severe weather impacting our area. We're going to get through this folks. The system's still far away. It's still 283 miles away from us here in the Tampa Bay area, and it looks to be making landfall somewhere near Cedar Key. But here are the things that you need to know to keep you and your family safe. Have those storm preps completed latest by 6 p.m. tonight, and then please heed those evacuation warnings. You don't have to go to Georgia or a different state for evacuations, but if you just move 10 to 15 miles inland, that's going to be a major help. So the major change while you were sleeping, this is a hurricane. It's a category one, but realistically, we're still seeing storm surge is going to be peaking throughout the overnight hours while people are sleeping, while you are sleeping between 1 to 7 a.m. Some power outages are possible and isolated tornadoes for mainly today up until midnight. Talking about hour by hour, we can see the bands of rain and wind starting to enter our area today at 2 o'clock. The system will gradually continue to move northward in the Gulf, and as it does so, that's going to make our weather here locally deteriorate quickly heading into tonight. That's why those storm preps need to be done by 6 o'clock. We're going to be fine, but we are going to see a good amount of gusty winds and a heavy amount of rainfall as well. Now, as the system continues to move northward, here's what we got going on. More bands of rain and wind, and within these bands, we could see some isolated tornadoes up until about midnight. Then thereafter, once we hit about 1 a.m. You see the eye and the system is parallel to the Tampa Bay area. This is where the surge is going to come into play. So we do see the southwesterly flow that's going to push all that water into the Tampa Bay and that's the biggest impact guys. So for more on the storm surge and explaining exactly what that even means and what the threats we face are is meteorologist Mike Prangley. Thank you, Amanda. And yes, storm surge, it's the deadliest part of these tropical cyclones. So when we say surge, and you see these numbers. So what does four to seven feet mean? When you say four to seven feet, that is meaning instead of the normal high tide at sea levels like you see here, that tide's gonna be four to seven feet higher, well above my head than it normally is above that sea level, okay? So that's what makes it dangerous. And then on top of that, the churning of the angry waves that sometimes can reach 10, 20 feet. So really, these structures you see behind me, they don't stand a chance, okay? When that storm surge comes ashore, basically we've got a storm system in our Hurricane Adalia that's gonna be piling up water along the coastline. And as that happens, yes, it inundates everything. So it's called inundation is what we call it. And as we take a look at that water, watch it come up. And that's what we're gonna see tonight after midnight, okay? So the worst of the flooding, I think, with this storm would be tonight. We've got eight to 12 foot storm surges along the nature coast, six to nine feet by the time you head into Pasco County, Hernando County, four to seven feet. This includes Clearwater and St. Pete, Sarasota, Bradenton in that three to five feet. So as we take a look at the current winds, we're talking about the wind that'll start to come around to the southwest, but that doesn't happen until midnight. Notice we still have that east wind in Tampa at eight miles per hour, but notice Key West, you now have some tropical storm force gusts down that way, and that's an indication the wind is starting to kick up and it's going to move our way. And as that happens, look at this. 
by midnight to 12 p.m. tomorrow will be the highest winds up towards Citrus County, Pasco County, Hernando, 50 to 70 with gusts to 80, storm surge of 8 to 12 feet, locally higher rain amounts than 5 to 10 inches. We take a look at some more rainfall, 4 to 8 inches, but it's the storm surge we're most concerned about. That includes Pinellas County, uh, and we're talking about a storm surge of 4 to 7 feet, winds of 50 to 75 miles per hour, and the highest wind and this includes Hillsboro, and this highest surge would be again after midnight, and that would be the hours to watch would be 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. on those highest wind gusts. So, of course, we'll continue to keep you updated county by county. We'll take a closer look at Bradenton, Sarasota, and back into Polk County coming up. And this is one thing's for sure. This storm is for all of us with some big impacts here at home.